Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Alpha Traders. This is your next episode of Crypto and Clown World. Obviously, we're still there. So is Bitcoin, apparently. <clears throat> Talked in the stream yesterday about this tight price action volatility range, that there was going to be some trending going on. And I did mention sometimes, excuse me, you can go half, three quarters of a day without any movement at all. Floating around in the uh, 68.3 Laplace level. And then bust to the upside, right? We've got a 2K move earlier in the day for standard deviation. Actually, the high was right at the daily R2. Right, this red line right here. Got a rejection there. Kind of just huddled around that first standard deviation. Close the day right below it. All right. When we opened up though, price action opened up above the new daily price action volatility range. The 68.3 Laplace distribution range to the downside was just above that daily. That's usually going to get you a nice bounce. We'll see what happens here. Have to look at the other charts, but obviously I'm not here to give signals. Just here to talk about uh, intraday trading, right? Low time frame volatility trading. Let's see here. 41.768. Another thing I noticed too, right? I talked about in the stream yesterday. Let me see the way it whipped right to the bottom side of the 68.3 Laplace distribution range on this projection from the 41K low. So that is interesting in itself. Plus, let me see something real quick. Two bars. Put this PB2 on 22. See this down move from the all time high? Yeah, nothing significant. All right, kind of just from that projection, we're just kind of fluttering in between this bottom of the 68.3 and the bottom of the 95.4. It's fine. But yeah, that's something where I'm not going to put too much weight on that projection. And another reason you gotta do is go over here, right? Get on the weekly. That's this entire move down, right? That's right. Let me put it on index. There we go. So this entire move down, right? It was all random. No trend at all. Random price action. Random price action drops that much, right? What 40 40k? <laughs> Had we, we pretty much had about, what, 50, 55% pullback, something of that nature. It's very interesting. So um, that's why I'm not going to put a lot of, uh, not too much attention on that projection, to be honest. One, two, three. Let me change this back. It's 29. Yes. This, there's, there's a lot more at play here, right? You can see, and it's still being respected with that bounce off of that level there. It helped too, by the way, right? You, the weekly dip back down into the 68.3 Laplace distribution range from this projection, of this recent, uh, recent little pump we've had here on the weekly. But did the same thing as the 41 Kalo. Immediately went up, rejected off the 95.4 Laplace distribution range. People are like, so what's that mean? There's a 95.4% chance Bitcoin goes to that level? No. There's a 95.4% chance Bitcoin will not exceed that level. There's only a 4.6% chance BTC's data set on the weekly will break this range. Right, but some on um, some of Bitcoin's most powerful moves since its inception, it's done it. Right, it can be done. But then you get up into the ninety nine seven, and that's really where things get stifled. Really get stifled. And on those extended runs to the top side, you know you'll you'll get it running up to the nine nine seven, going sideways for a while, hitting the top side of the ninety five four, and then going back up to the ninety nine seven happen especially you get down on some low time frames when you're getting into moves yeah you'll see it all the time can happen
But yeah, that's what the probabilities mean. But like once once you get price action up up above here, right? Outside the 68.3, like up here, you, you reject off the 95.4. There's a 68.3% chance you're going to pull back down into this range. Probabilities were on the side of that happening, and it did. Right? We pretty much ran a weekly 1SD as well. And then, but now weekly candle, it's pulled back up to the top side. This will be really interesting. I'm telling you right now, mark my words, that this projection right here works out. And this weekly candle even closes bullish. This could be the three-week low right here. And this thing's getting ready to turn around and give another crack at the 95.4. And we're talking, we're back up there around 60K again. Bitcoin's never going to be an easy process, right? Bitcoin does what Bitcoin does, and not too many people can trade it. It's very hard. Very hard. Let's see here. Let's see how to go back over here on the weekly. Let's see. Did have a little bit of hidden bear div, just a tiny bit on the weekly, but look at this returns oscillator. This returns oscillator on the weekly literally has been dropping down through the zero mean. You know, it's about halfway to the second standard deviation level. And you can see though, when that returns oscillator turned down, look at the look at the histogram. It went pink, right? I mean, it was a loot that the, the read you're getting on the returns oscillator is losing correlation, right? Is losing correlation with that price action. So return oscillator goes all the way down. Hell, when that thing first turned down, it was on this candle right here. And then this is all we've got out of it, right? We've got this, this pullback as it was, and I'll tell you what, it looks like it could be a lot. You see a weekly do that? You could get a major drop. In my opinion, $7,000 isn't that bad, to be honest. It'd be nice here on the weekly to see this uh, reverse Fisher support the reverse wave trend, right? Wave trend in white dots, reverse Fisher purple. That'd be real nice. So they could take off again. Let's see. It's people like, but no, we're in a bear market. It's crypto winter. I'm like, goodness. So that's when I break out the quarterly chart on people and be like, let's put this in perspective. Bitcoin's a bull. Bitcoin's always been a bull, and Bitcoin always will be a bull. Obviously, that's my opinion, but uh, hold it strongly. It's a powerful asset. Okay, so what have we? What just happened on the daily? Got to keep this reverse wave trend, right? I mean, literally, if that move we had up to that forty-eight k new local high there, you got the wave trend cross back up the Fisher first time, really since since the all-time high when they crossed, right? I mean, we had already dumped quite a bit, but. That was the first cross back up. Those are powerful crosses. I could give a shit about moving averages unless they're a log return moving averages. But when you're talking about reverse Fisher and reverse wave trend, those are powerful crosses. Really are. I mean, obviously, you could set this a little tighter to have the crosses be a little tighter, but I like it better. Right? I like it better. Not that it's like uh, lagging on price action, but it really, it really gives you an idea what's going to be happening. Not, not just snap judgment, right? Oh, we had the cross. Oh, golden cross, death cross. Oh shit! No, that's not what this is all about. In my opinion. Let's see here. So yeah, guys. I mean, I was talking about all this bull div on the daily, right? A lot of bull div, guys. The whole way. Right, there has been bold div just building, 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 building this entire drop. Right now, you've got the return oscillator up here above the zero mean, and let's put this in perspective of how high this return oscillator can go. Right, got this in perspective now. I mean, we're right here, one point two two. I mean, this thing, this thing can run like crazy. Spanned that. Uh, Volatility band, right? It's a second standard deviation band. It's already went through. If anything, you get a little, and, and is what I really like to see is there was no bear div. There was no bear div. Here's the thing, though. 
here's the thing. Now we we've played out, we're playing out all this bull div, right? Just with this move back up to here, which isn't that much. I'm surprised. I that that type of bull div, I would think, would push this thing back up above these moving these uh log return moving averages. Uh maybe 45-ish at least. We'll see what happens. Cause it, it what what's it setting up now, right? Setting up hidden bear. All right, got higher highs on the oscillator, lower highs on price action. That's why you literally cancel out a lot of it. Yeah, you need to get up here at 44K, in my opinion, just to be safe. The Fishers are turning up on the daily, though. I really like that. <clears throat> Entropy is losing correlation to the downside, heading back into randomness. That's always a recipe for price action to walk up. Positive correlation, expanding volatility. Same thing with the uh, C score of historical volatility. It's even better yet, heading back up, heading positively correlated. Right? Heading back up, positively correlated. This is one of those indicators where when you understand correlation, the breaks in it and what's happening with that Z score, is it rising or falling? Right? What side? Right? Where are we? It'll blow your mind. It's di very directional. Very directional indeed. To give you some examples real quick. Like, let's see here. Now we'll save that for a later time. We'll get carried away with the teaching. Let's see. Okay. Let's pop on a four hour. Hmm. Say what? The log return Z score is uh, way above the confidence intervals on an outlier. So, yeah, that's when I pop over on the VRE. I'm like, you know, could price action run away right now? Sure, it could. Sure, it could. Because that log return Z score can surely turn back up. But uh, what was that baby kicking at? Uh, yeah. Almost three standard deviations. Okay. Um, we are above the Gaussian mean. Volatility bands are collapsing again, and percentile is contracting negatively correlated. I do like the way the chart looks, actually. I mean, we we're definitely coming off some bear diff. Let's see what happens, because obviously. Uh, we're getting ready to start setting up some hidden bowl, a couple stabs of it as well. So that that would be nice for a nice move up to that 45 region. Let's see though. Happening on the 90 minute. My favorite. My favorite. Yeah, set up hidden bowl right now on the 90. All right, you got a lower low on the oscillator. Um and correlations flashing right you can see so you see how on the 90 minute when the returns oscillator turn it ran all the way to the downside pink histogram though telling you price actions probably not going to follow that and it did not it just went sideways that is a bullish reset on this indicator in my opinion if there ever was one here people throw that word around they don't even know what the hell it means but you got a lower low here on the oscillator, right? So we are, it is setting up hidden bull div. Bouncing off the second standard deviation band and the correlations flashing. If you see like this next 90 minute candle, you see blue histogram. This thing's probably going to pop. Probably going to pop. And same here. I mean, log return Z score has been heading down. My price just went sideways. Need to cross back up. Whoop, get off there. Need to cross back up. Uh, Waitron and Fisher here. Been a minute, right? Has been a minute. Literally the 90 crossed way before that four hour or that daily did. So yeah. Boy, look at that too on the 90 minute, right? Look at that Fisher just kicking price action back. Rejection, rejection. Didn't even quite make it there, but here we go, right? This is, this is, this is, we're going to reject hard here. 
or or you're going to close some 90 minute candles above above that fissure so we'll see what's that at 41 521 i mean let's be real we're almost there we're almost there so what's the 45 telling us variance is really low variance is really low same thing setting up some hidden bull divergence no i do not want to leave ah this could be good i mean it's heading negatively correlated while it's contracting we want to see entropy percentile expand positively correlated same with the z score right of historical volatility this thing turns up needs to stay positively correlated but yeah we're getting close variance is low variance is not gonna stay stay low forever it usually pops real quick let's see Hmm. Yeah, no did by the building at all. It's low time frame. And we are above, right? Wave trend and Fisher. more on bitcoin i mean obviously right we know the markets are correlated right? spy had a good day nasdaq had a good day spy was up five points um yeah gold and silver doing what gold and silver does pretty much uh eases you check whole crude oil uh back up it was bound down 95 or something which is a joke. We've got plenty of oil. We have plenty of oil. Yeah. Yeah, let's just buy it from other places. Makes sense. Oh, I just, yeah, I see your uh, <laughs> cute gif. Little husky. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Because that's, that's all it's really good for. I mean, that's the thing. The indicators we already have, dude, these are powerful as hell. It's like, you know, and I know you've got the, uh, just the, the, uh, the lowest um, Discord access. So you literally, you got three basic, you know, you got the AVP indicator, the Pearson correlation, the uh, laser returns, and then the volatility quality, which is publicly available on um, TradingView. But man, you haven't even dipped into all the indicators that the Pro Trader package has. And um, you're asking for other indicators. <laughs> Trust me. But before that, you this is just, um, at least when you get to a point, that's what I tell everybody, come in for 10 bucks a month. Test the waters, see what you think about volatility trading, watch some of the streams, watch how I work all this together, right? And it's not just this chart, right? It's three charts. I've got three charts set up that I use when I'm actively trading low time frames. People are like, well, that's too much. Oh my God. It's like, no, it's not actually. Not when you understand your indicators. They're not lagging indicators. Then they're showing me exactly what I need to know to trade with the algos. So that's all in the, you know, in the end that matters. But I would highly recommend at some point. I mean, and, and this is also, this is for people. I mean, some people can just afford it, right? But most people that get the pro trader, this is what you want to do. This is what you want your job to be at some point, right? So you're going to make some sacrifices. You're going to get the, you're going to get the whole alpha trading system. You're going to have to start studying all the indicators, uh, build yourself a workflow, because even when it's all good, we've got great indicators. But if you're an intraday trader, 
And it doesn't really matter what time you start. I mean, people are in different time zones, whatever. It's like you, you need to be able to have a workflow where you're dropping down through time frames. You might get one peak at the daily, right? I take one peak. I want to see where the daily Laplace and normal distribution levels are and where the new daily price action volatility ranges with all their supports and resistances and the four hour Laplace and normal distribution ranges, right? And then I'm on to the four hour where all the fun starts, all right? And I'm looking at this four hour chart and like I've told other people, it's not like I just go and I diagnose every indicator like you see me doing on stream. I'm doing that for because it's better so people under have a little bit better of understanding what the indicators are and stuff. Instead of trying to explain to people, well, this is what I do. I pull the chart up and I'm I'm literally looking like that like the blank stare, right? I'm looking towards the middle of the entire chart, and this entire chart is just giving me a reading. I've uh, specifically put all these indicators. Um, they're all in a specific place. Excuse me. They give me an idea, right? And this side I'm using mainly for divergence, right? Mainly for divergence. This side, the top half's volatility, bottom half's entropy. That's all I need to know. And so that'll spit out. Boom, four hour. I usually, when I'm actively trading, because if I'm getting down, uh, it's all good looking at the charts but if you're spending more than like five minutes going through your going through your charts at the beginning of an intraday trading day you're 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 definitely you're overcooking your eggs man you need to be able to look at the four hour look at the 90 minute look at the 45 minute down to the 15 right and then so the 15, 45, and 90 minute, to be exact, I'm going to take one peek at the four hour, right? And I want to see what kind of bias that chart gives me, top side or downside. What am I seeing? And then by the time I get down through the 15 minute, I know when I'm getting my entries on the five, where I'm going, where, which way, longs or shorts, right? It is it, am I going to allocate my full account, not leverage? I'm going to use a 100% of my existing account. So if I have three Bitcoins in my account and my bias is to the top side from what I've seen from the four hour, 90, 45 and 15 minute, I'm trading my full account with the longs, right? If, if, if that's what I was seeing, same with the downside. But then, and then when I see a counter trend opportunity, like this down move possibly, this down move possibly, I'm only going to use like a third of my account or a quarter of my account. And so then when you're talking about, first off, when you're trading low time frame volatility, you, you, there's no possible way. If, if, if you even start to become emotionally attached to trades, trading like this, you're, you're going to fail before you even start. <clears throat> it helps you learn you can't be emotionally attached. Look, this is my job. This is what I do. Boom. So how, how, how am I going to be a winner at my job? P&L. You got to have positive P&L. High percentage in my opinion too. And so when you're, when you're counter trading your bias with like a, just a small percentage of your account, it's just it, because those are the trades that could really go against you fast, right? So you got to be quick. You got to be able to take your profit fast. And at the same time, if it does turn on you, you're already going to limit your loss. But it's even going to be that much less because you're only using a quarter of your account. You can be more, uh, can, you can, uh, what's a good word? Let's just put it this way. You can charge, yeah, you can charge the field a little harder, you know, when you're going with your bias. But at the same time, if a trade turns against you, and I'm talking about if it turns against you, if it passes my entry point, if I'm hot and heavy in a trading session, 
right? Intraday trading sessions where I'll have 10 or 15 trades in eight hours or something. It's like I'm getting out of the trade immediately. If that thing turns around and passes my entry point, I'm, I'm just going to mark it out. Just going to mark it out of the trade. Okay. Because when you're volatility trading, especially those low time frames, hopefully a majority of those trades are when there's super low volatility and you're going to get a good move out of those trades. So you got to take advantage of every little, every little morsel to answer that question. It was a little long-winded. But yeah, that's what I would recommend. I mean, um, learn about volatility and the correlation, right? What happens when volatility expands and it's positively correlated or it's negatively correlated or when, it, or when volatility is contracting and it's positively or negatively correlated, right? Uh, try to read some divergence on the alpha laser returns, things of that nature. And uh, I, I would highly suggest doing that first. That's why on that lower level, we give you just those few indicators because those are the things you really need to look at first. If you want to be a volatility trader, you literally got the two most important indicators, right? The, the uh, alpha volatility percentile, which this is just a souped up version. It's got a lot more in the Pearson correlation. So you pull up the AVP, the correlation below it, and you correlate that volatility to price action. If you have not done that on your chart already, that is something you need to do immediately if you're not using that already. Got to set it up. <clears throat> but yeah, just uh, if you need help doing that, just ask in the chat or whatever. I agree. It's taken me quite a while to understand what I'm looking at, that APP and CC. But now that I've been able to understand how all my things line up, I see that I can start to refine things now just through this APP and CC. Oh, yeah. Um, like it can make my, I can have more space to look at the indicators and stuff. Um, yeah, and I have to train my eye to look at it. But I, I can understand what's going on now. Before I think I was looking at it, I was so confused. Um, because I maybe didn't know. But then now it's taken like, like four months for me to look at this thing and go, okay, I can see what's going on here now. You know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I need to practice with it for sure. But yeah, yeah it's I mean, like, that, goes, that goes for, that goes, I'm just saying that goes for like a lot of people, you know, like learn these indicators one by one. Like when they get put in a combo like this, it just becomes so much easier to comprehend and it becomes streamlined and it's like, oh, okay, sick. This is what that line actually does. Oh, okay. Now it's over here. Okay. You know, it's uh, figure out the variable, watch the variable, then add it to, to the rest of the equation, whatever it is. It's, uh, it's, this is so tactical, man. I like it. I like it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, traditional markets for sure tomorrow and uh, Friday. See how they end up to see what Bitcoin does because they are highly correlated still. And Bitcoin's actually, you know, I mean, if this thing wants to run away now, we're all good. I mean, this daily range got tested way close enough, especially when the 68.3 is that close to the top side. That's a nice test. And from what I was seeing on the charts, it does look like it wants to move. And keep an eye on the Nasdaq E mini futures tonight. If you are, if, if you're, you know, if you're in that time zone where uh, this is your active trading time, <laughs> keep an eye on it. See what Nasdaq's doing. And then pre market on the spy. Be good stuff. So, all that being said, so if you're watching this on YouTube for the first time, we are alpha trading. We trade volatility, probability, and statistics, and we love to teach people to do the same. The link to our Discord, it's in the description of all of our videos. Come on into the Discord. Look in the shop channel. There's two different levels to our Discord to get you access to the Alpha Trading system. Open up a support ticket. Tell us what's on your mind. We'd love to hear from you. you can answer any questions you might have.
And with all that being said, thanks guys for joining in live in the Discord. Another perk of being a member. I will uh, see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good rest of your evening. Ciao, bella. Thank <laughs> you.